When we started the company, that's the truck I drove. And we just keep it around thinking it'll die. It just never dies. It has something like 400,000 miles or something on it. We're just waiting for it to die and it just keeps not dying. But that's how we started the company. And now we have six nice, newer, logoed up vehicles, which it's important, man. People look at your company and how you look. This is good for how we started, but you want to pull up in a logoed vehicle um, with website and information they can check up on. If we did $5 million worth of business, that's a wonderful, beautiful place to live. It's great life for myself as the owner. It's a good, comfortable amount. <clears throat> but some drive in us makes us continue to push and you have to go further than that. And it's an unstoppable thing, whatever it is. And so I'm constantly, we do it. Now we are shooting to be more than that, of course. But to look back and know that 5 million was the number that was when things were very controllable and everything was good, I sometimes think, man, could we just go back and just live like that? But I think it happens with a lot of entrepreneurs. I just don't think I could because I, if I know there's an opportunity and Jody's the same way, I can't help but go and do that next thing. It has to keep growing. And the only real uh, peace and enjoyment I get from it, again, it's not the dollar amount to me. It is the growing part. It is the making this thing, what are we becoming thing. To be worried about my competition is a sense of lack in my mind. That would mean, oh, there must not be enough work, and I better be really concerned about what he's doing. Well, that isn't true at all. There is so much work in this area. Every one of us could do more roofs than we could handle a day, and we would never actually come across each other. So this whole thing where they're taking down one company's signs and putting up other ones, I, we don't get into any of it, and I'm actually close with the owner of that company, JDH, the owner of Level Up, and um, there's at least one or two other ones. I like to be friends with them if I can. We don't, you know, we should not be, we can compete with each other and not be hateful. And, and it, again, as soon as you start setting guys up or you're consumed with how much work they're getting or trying to stop them from getting it, then you've said in your mind that there's not enough work and you're screwed anyways. So I would say there's so much work, it wouldn't matter how good they do. They did just do the Rodney Webb program, so I know they're gonna do good, and I'm more ha happy for him than I am worried about it. Because again, he could r maximize and get as many jobs as he can in this area, and it would not leave me in lack. You know, there's still plenty. There's more than enough. Another thing I do, man, is I'll also get real stressed out during the day. If I get caught up in too many problems and I feel overwhelmed, um, is I will stop and take that break for a minute. It seems like not the smart thing to do, but I've watched my whole life that presidents do that. Like they'll talk about, um, here's this war thing about to happen or some horrible thing happened and the president went to Camp David. And they're like, oh, he's taking a vacation while this problem's happening. And actually it's a thing they do, they do by design. It's actually designed so that they can calm down and think rationally about this huge decision you're gonna make. So I will, I will like check out, and by check out for me, I'm talking like 15 minutes at most. So I could never check out for the whole day. <clears throat> but what really clears my mind, this is crazy to say, I actually just go and sit by the water somewhere around here and uh, think or whatever, meditate, I, all those things that I do. And then if all else fails, I put on um, some WWE wrestling videos. And <laughs> something about, the grown men in tights pretending and jumping around and stuff. I love it, man. It's always been this great stress reliever to me. This big, strong man, and he's pretending this person's beating him up and all. Like, there is something magical about the stress relief I get from WWE, WWF. Guys like Grant Cardone and, and Sam Taggart and um, man, Lee Hates another one. There's a bunch of these guys on social media that if you're feeling and I do it all the time. I'm feeling kind of like, oh man, what am I doing? I'm not feeling it. I'll just pull up on YouTube. YouTube is a great thing and I'll pull up those videos, man. Uh, Roofing Insights is another great one I watch with Dmitry Lipinski. Like, I just got to get back into it because whatever thing I absorb myself in is what I am. 
when I did the Everest thing. I was absorbed with that. Everything about me was that. It was all around me. When I was running all the time, I was absorbed in it. And so everything I was watching and doing was all related to that. And so it became me and who I was. And so it works with business and everything too. So I'll watch Coach Michael Burt, great one that we met through Sam Taggart. Man, you wanna get inspired. You wanna get uh, thinking right when you know you're not thinking right. Those are the guys. Pull those up, watch one of those videos, get re-inspired. And it's funny because the problem is what it is. The issues are, are or were what they were. And so just by changing my mindset, it then gets dealt with differently. The problem still is what it is. The solution still was what it was. I don't really, I didn't need to really seek out any technical answers. I just needed to get my mind right to not be overwhelmed. Most of the issues we deal with as a roofing and exterior construction, most of them are, it's pretty obvious what the issue is if there is one. Uh, it's not super, super technical. So a lot of it is managing personalities, dealing with certain workers or homeowners that are, you know, some people just don't mesh and it really doesn't matter what's going on with the job or what, how something went, there's gonna be trouble. Um, I learned when I learned to be a project manager years ago in the uh, late 90s. Yeah, we can call it project manager all you want. You're managing personalities. You're managing people. That's what you're doing. And that will usually resolve all your issues. Roofing companies going, seeing the damage, get the roof approved for insurance. And years ago, it, it, the main thing that mattered, the damage, the level of damage and the storm date, it's going to be good. Well, there's so many people doing this now that the insurance companies have over, they've overprotected themselves. They've like set up and put their guard up in such a way that the level of damage on the house is almost secondary. You really gotta convince them that you're a good company and you're not a desperate sales guy who's just trying to get another job. None of that should even, none of that should matter, but it's just a reality of this thing we do. And so, it's real big to manage the personalities with the adjusters, the desk adjuster, and the customers. I tell them, hey, Mrs. Smith, um, here's the pictures of all the damage I saw in your house. I've made it into a document and emailed it to you. Everything's time stamped. And as much as this should be an automatic approval right on the spot, there's a good chance it's not going to be that. There's a good chance I'm going to have to um, get them to just extend coverage on a handful of shingles and then I'm gonna have to do a repairability or an eye tell. There's all these other steps that we know to do, um, but I make sure to really go over that with them because if you don't, you know, if you just tell them, yeah, yeah, all oh, your roof's a mess, we got this, it's gonna be approved, and you get that first kickback from the adjuster where they talk about, oh, uh, it's under the deductible, the amount of repairs, and so, you know, it's being declined. Then they're mad, they're upset, they're hurt, you wasted their time, they put in this claim, they could start doing bad reviews, who knows? So you manage the expectations in advance and tell them. You know, I have a lot of John Sinek videos. John Sinek, another one I met through Sam Taggart, and we had him down to train us. He has a lot of videos that kind of go into that and show that, you know, ultimately, it will get it approved because I don't push and try to get jobs through where, where we shouldn't. I'm only doing it if it is the rightful thing to do. Um, but it's a whole nother situation now on how that gets dealt with. It is not how it used to be. We're now doing the real door-to-door -door thing. Really went and got multiple uh, guys and girls who we have out there knocking on doors. We've tried it before and it hasn't worked out um, because we kind of half-heartedly did it, man. We really did. We, we just, either someone will come up and say they've done it before, we'll be like, all right, and we'll just toss them out there and just hope that it works out and it doesn't. Again, why is that guy available if he can do this? If he's this great door-to-door -door sales guy, why is he at my door asking to work for me? So we learned that that's no good. You gotta get guys in and then you have to, not only do you have to make sure they know and they can do the thing they say they can do, you have to then train them. So we've been giving them all kinds of um, uh, videos and things to watch. Um, a lot of the door-to-door -door university stuff. And then we have a sales manager who actually go and check on them. And then I'll go and I'll run around and actually check on them. And that's made a big difference. So they realize that's happening. And that kind of cuts um, 
that cuts off the weak ones right off the bat because they realize they're being watched and so they don't even attempt it for more than a day or two. Um, and we got some guys now that are really doing it. We really gave them their, their money. They get that money in their hands and realize like, oh my God, I'm in a storm area and I've just received this money for just convincing someone to take the next step. And um, man, we got five guys right now that are doing really good at it. So good at it that it pointed out a few weaknesses in our office. So we finally do the door-to-door -door thing properly and we have all this work coming in at one time and then we're like, oh, we got some production issues and some things that, you know, that we, hey, at least we know it now. So as this gets five times bigger that we don't go flailing apart. So we were able to see it in the beginning, this mass amount of work coming in, that there was a problem keeping in touch with all these uh, customers and keeping things properly organized. We're switching from job progress to job nimbus, like as we speak. So I think that's gonna make a big difference. But um, the main thing is checking up on these guys and having a sales manager. That's the big thing. And so everyone will come to this conclusion eventually anyways, if you're doing anything, whether it's roofing, solar, um, uh, the bug stuff, or any test, cutting down trees, you're gonna come to uh, the realization that you must systemize things. Obviously, McDonald's had it figured out. Any person who works there can make fries because they drop this thing and push that button and when it beeps, they lift it. And we're big on systemizing things. And the parts of our company that rock and roll with no issues, it, they are all systemized. And they are no matter what. I started a little thing years ago with our company called the No Matter What Club. And when things weren't catching on, if there was a problem, I would say, all right, this is part of the no matter what. This is the no matter what. No matter what, you must do this and then we would systemize it. So every time this happens, you do this. And then every time that happens, you do this. And the more systemized you are, that's who the successful roofing contractors are, let's be honest. Uh, they're sales companies. Most of them are sales companies disguised as roofing contractors. But whoever's the most systemized, who can complete the tasks efficiently and properly and in a timely fashion, are the ones who are gonna be successful and whose name is gonna be out there as a good company you can rely on. Systems are it.